In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an online survey using a Google Form. To start making your Google Form, first go into Google Drive, then go to New, go down to More, hover your mouse over the More option, and you'll see Google Forms appear. Click on Google Forms to start a new form. Your blank form will open up, and the first thing that you might want to do is give your form some sort of title. In this example, I'm going to be making a form that a fictional hotel might give to guests who have recently stayed at the hotel. It's always a good idea to give a short explanation of why you're asking questions and what you might do with the answers. You can put that information in the form description. Now we need to get into the questions that we're going to be asking. You should always start your survey with an easy question to answer. The more easy questions you can give people at the start, the more invested they will be in the survey and therefore the more likely they will be to complete the survey once they are a few questions in and you start asking those harder questions where they have to think more about the answer. So a really easy question to start with and a useful question for you might be their age, gender, uh, where they live in the world, what job they do, things like that. I'm going to begin by asking for my respondent's age and rather than asking for the specific age, I'm going to give them some bands to answer within. So to do that, I'm going to click on the first question and I'm going to either ask a question or state what I would like them to do. And now I have to select the type of answer. So by default here, I've got a multiple choice type and that's suitable for age range because there's going to be several different options and you can only choose one of them. So we're going to stick with multiple choice and I'm going to put some age ranges in here. So I've got age sorted and the next question that I'm going to ask is going to be about uh, my respondent's gender. So I'm going to create a new question by pressing this little plus button to add a question. And then I'm just going to say, please indicate your gender. And sometimes, depending on the question you ask and if Google is clever enough to work it out, they will actually offer you um, some pre-built options. And in this case, they've given me some pretty good ones. Female, male, prefer not to say, and other. So I'm going to add all of those options to my list. So I've got some background data about my respondents and now I would like to know more specifically about the visit that my guest had to my hotel. So for this one, I'm going to be asking a question um, to, for them to sort of rate the comfort of their bed. Now, at this point, I could ask a leading question such as, did you enjoy your comfortable bed? And that's a very leading question because it's making the assumption that the bed is comfortable in the first place. We want to avoid that. We don't want to put any bias into our questions. We want to give our respondents the freedom to be completely honest and not feel like they're being pushed one way or another. And a great way to do that is to use ratings scales where you have an equal number of negative and positive responses. So I'm going to do that now. And Google Forms is clever enough to work out that we're asking a rating scale question um, and it has automatically changed the question type from multiple choice to a linear scale. But you need to give the labels for what's at each end of the scale. So the lowest end of the scale will be something like very uncomfortable and at the top end of the scale it might be something like very comfortable. Then sometimes we want to get a little bit more detail. Maybe we want to understand that answer a bit more precisely. And for that, we can ask an open-ended question where they just have to type their response. So let's add a new question. And for this one, I'm going to ask them to just expand on their answer a little bit. And again, Google Forms is clever enough to work out that we now want to write a paragraph of text as our option. Sometimes we want to provide our respondents with several different options they can choose from where they can pick more than one option. So I'm going to add a new question and this question is going to say something like um, which other hotels have you stayed at in the last 12 months? And for this one Google Forms has not worked out that I want multiply selectable answers so I'm going to have to change it myself. So I'm going to click where it says multiple choice and I'm changing to check boxes because checkboxes allow you to have several things selected at once. And here I can put my range of hotels. So let's have a go. 
And because it's very, very unlikely that we have thought of every single option, we're going to add an other option, which means that they can type in any extra ones that we've missed. So we've got our questions. Um, we just have a few final things to do before we send it off. One thing is that we might want to just change the look and feel of our form. Currently it's this sort of purple colour, but maybe we want to change the colour to meet our brand. So to do that I can click on colour palette up here, and I can either change to a fixed colour or I could upload an image, maybe a logo or something like that. Let's imagine that Sleep Easy has a nice orangey colour, and that's what I'm going to change my form colour to. And I'm just going to change some of the settings on my form using this little cog icon. Here's where we can make a few useful changes. So if you're doing this in school and you want to collect the email addresses of the people who have responded so that you can identify them, then you could tick that box. However, if it's not important that you can identify them, or indeed if you want to keep it anonymous, then you should untick that box. In Google Forms, you can specify whether people have to be signed in to answer the form or not. If you want to send your surveys to people outside of college, you'll need to untick that box. But if you only want people to be able to respond once, then you should tick this box. But that will require that they sign in. You can also specify whether people should be able to edit their response after they've submitted it, probably leave that unticked, and whether they should see any kind of summary of all responses at the end. Under presentation, we can show a progress bar if it's quite a long survey. And if you want to avoid any kind of bias based on the order that the questions have been asked in, you can randomize the question order by ticking this box here. Finally, once they've submitted their answers, you might want to change the confirmation message to something a bit friendlier that just makes people feel that little bit better about having given up some time for you. Once you've got those settings as you want them, you can just press save. And now you are ready to send your survey. In order to do that, you just need to click on the send button. And you have some options. You can either put an email address of people that you want to send um, your survey to, or you can click on this link icon and you can get a link to your survey. With that link, you can paste that into an email and send it to people, or you could send it via some sort of social media such as Snapchat or Facebook or Twitter. Because it's quite long, you can tick the shorten URL button and now you get a shortened link which still takes you to the same form. This is ideal if you're putting it uh, in some sort of social media posting. Once you've sent your link to your respondents and they click on that link, they will see something that looks like your preview. So this is exactly what they'll see when they go to complete your survey. And as your respondents start answering your survey questions, you'll be able to see them in the responses tab here. Now obviously I don't have any responses yet, but when the survey begins to be completed, responses will come through and you'll see a summary of the responses and some automatically generated charts in this part of the Google Forms, which you can get back to by opening your form from Google Drive. The very last thing we need to do is provide a name for the form so that you can find it again easily. So where it says Untitled Form up here, just click and rather cleverly, it will automatically take on the name of the survey as the name of the form. So that's all there is to producing a survey using Google Forms. The hardest thing is getting your questions right, getting questions that are short and to the point, getting questions that really get to the things you want to know about, and identifying the right type of question in order to be able to provide easy um, and suitable answers for the different questions that you're asking.